Welcome to the Art and Science of Complex Sales. This is a podcast where we explore how the best B2B sales leaders make the complex simple, drive relationships and revenue, and generally elevate the sales profession. In this podcast, we're bringing together sales experts, thought leaders, top account executives, buyers, industry insiders, all to share their experiences and best practices for navigating the complex sales cycle. So whether you're a seasoned sales professional, a sales leader, or just starting out, you're going to find practical insights and actionable advice that you can apply to your own sales journey. Plus, we have a bit of fun. Today on the show, we have master sales star sales coach, David Mullins. David's a father of seven, a former pastor, and a successful salesperson and leader across multiple industries and businesses. His greatest professional gift and joy is coaching people to help them achieve the right mindsets, skill sets, and processes to exceed their largest stretch goals. Let's get into this. Dave, Dave Mullins, welcome to the show. Thanks, Paul. Man, it's great to be here. I've uh, been listening to your podcast for a couple months now and super excited to be uh, to be invited, to be part of it. Thank you. Well, that's exciting that you're listening to it. I think oh, it's getting a, yeah, the, the the listenership is getting bigger and broader and uh, really pumped by some of the impact we're making and and it's fun. So we're going to get your voice out there. And one of the things I really wanted to talk about is is coaching and sales coaching. And so we're going to dive into that uh, heavy today with a real real focus on why it's needed, how we do it, what are the impacts of it. And all that, but before we dive in there, uh, I think it's really important to get a baseline in terms of your background and and what you've done in sales and where you came from. So, do you mind uh, sharing that story with us? Oh, sure, Paul. I love I love sharing sharing my story and the journey because there's so much involved and in people that have invested and in, kind of got me to where I am. I'm I'm a a firm believer that we don't get where we are without uh, you know lots of people and influences and factors around us, and it's important we recognize those. I, I started my professional life in, in the nonprofit world a lot like you. I was in ministry, uh, working at a camp and um, wor- working in churches and, and doing a, a lot of nonprofit work. And circumstances came about that, that we decided I, I need to get, I'm going to get into the business world and I'm not really sure what that means. How do I translate these skills of, of teaching and counseling and mentoring? And how do I translate those skills into life like business? Um, and in the meantime, I had a friend who was a manager. This is funny. He was a manager of a shoe department at a large uh, you know, retail store. And uh, he said, well, if you just need to make a little money while you're bridging the gap here, you can come sell shoes for me. I'm like, oh, I've never sold anything before, but sure. Well, you know, three days a week, I was selling way more than the guys that were working five, six days a week. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just talking to people. I'm listening. I'm asking them questions. Why do you want these shoes? Are you looking for comfort? Are you looking for style or classy? Or what are you going to wear them with? Where are you going to go? What do you want to do with them? Why do you like these ones? And I'd go to the back and bring back three similar ones. And you know what? They'd buy all three of them. Um, and and I didn't know what I was doing then. But of course, as I look back at that, and I'm like, that's that's really what sales is, right? Finding what people need, helping them accomplish their goals. And I was doing that. Just, just didn't know it. It seems so natural because of counseling and mentoring and discipleship. You just... You help people set a course for where they want to go, and then you find a way to help them with that. And uh, I was doing that, and suddenly I realized, you know what? This is this is fun. I love seeing people win, and I get to be part of that. So, um, you know, look. So, how do I start in sales? Uh, how do I find a job in sales? With I mean, I've got a a, a theology degree. How do I find a job in sales? And, of course, the credit card processors will hire anybody, so that's where I started, <laughs> and um, they, they, you know, they do that. But it was I, I was with a solid, solid company, really great, and and really quickly into it, they recognized he's he's okay at sales, but he's a lot better helping the people around him. So they quickly moved me into management, and then higher, and then higher, and then before I knew it, here I was. Um, is sort of a, a sales trainer in a Fortune 500 company. I thought, wow. I have a degree, little degree in theology. How why am I training people in sales? 
But Paul, you know, from all your timing, that's really what you just listen to people. You ask good questions. You care about where, where they, what they need and where they're going. And then you find out how you can help them. Um, and, um, you know, I eventually got to the point where I wanted to do this on my own, not work for someone else. And so I started uh, selling insurance and developed an insurance business that was really successful. And then a couple of years ago, connected with a friend at SalesStar and said, hey, we, we're, we're building out our U.S. business here, our U.S. coaches, and we'd love to have you on board. And uh, two years now, I've been coaching with SalesStar and helping other businesses thrive. And I just love it. There you go. That's, an, that's, that's maybe too long, but it's really exciting. No, that's an awesome. That is an awesome story. So, um, the, you're tell me the thread that goes through all of that. Like, what is the what's the red thread that you're pulling on to throughout your career that has helped you be successful? That's a great question, Paul. I think um, really the the key for me has always been my my goal has been to help people around me, whether they reported to me or whether I reported to them or whether they were clients or just neighbors, you know, how do I help other people accomplish the things that are important to them? How do I really help them grow and be successful? And, and it sounds very noble, right? But the reality is it's kind of selfish because as I see other people really excelling and growing and thriving, man, I get those I get that, that, that just that rush. I think science calls it dopamine hit or something. Right. But I just get that. That's so exciting to me to see other people thriving. And um, yeah. And I, and I think all through, I've been able to whatever, whether I was, uh, you know, working in a, a Christian youth camp or whether I was selling shoes at JC Penney, you know, I was, uh, I was helping other people accomplish their goals. And I love it. Uh, and so we're both we're both uh, practitioners and users of the you know the OMG testing. Right? Yeah, absolutely. What is your what is your motivation? Uh, uh, come do you come out as extrinsic or in, intrinsic motivation? Yeah, it's I mean it's it's pretty intrinsic. Uh, it's actually fairly balanced, but the extrinsic isn't so much money driven. I mean, let's be honest. I like money as much as anybody, Paul. But it's not really the driver. Um, it's, it's that the feeling I get, the, the, the joy and, and watching other people, the, those are the extrinsic, the intrinsic for me is just that, you know, one of the things on the OMG, it's funny you bring that up. I, I talk about this frequently. I am like off the charts negative on the need for approval, <laughs> but I'm self-aware about it. Like I recognize that's a challenge for me, but, but there's self-awareness so I can, I can modulate it. And I can be careful with it, but I I just love when other people um, are 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 thriving and doing well, and and um, and that means things are going well. Um, so I, yeah, hope that makes sense. Oh no, I think it it makes perfect sense, and and there's a balance here, right? I think between um, and that's what I wanted to dive into, which is I think why it makes you a great manager and a great makes you a great leader and a great coach. All of these things that I've heard uh, you're very good at and, and understand from you know clients and, and the business that you work in. So like, t- let's talk about that. Let's talk about salespeople and why why is coaching so important to a salesperson that's out there selling insurance on their own or it's out there selling you know complex B2B stuff on their own. What is it that you truly bring to them uh, when you dive in and help them? And coach, yeah. I mean, it's well. I mean, it has a couple layers, right? Because there's part of what I get to do is coaching sales teams, which is is a blast, right? It's a blast because uh, you can get immediate. You see immediate results when when you begin to point out a just a little mindset tweak that suddenly the results take off, or a little skill comp, a little competency tweak. And and suddenly their their ratios are way better, and so there's just that 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 um, pretty quick hit of, of just immediate impact, that immediate gratification of what you're doing. But I think far more long term impact is when I spend time coaching sales leaders and sales managers, 
Um, and I think that that is wildly important and something I see missing so much. We, we've all seen it, Paul, right? Where the, the great salespeople get promoted to sales management. And Moy, we know it's a complete different skill set, right? It is a completely different skill set. And so we see great salespeople stepping into management and they can't understand why their team's not winning because everybody just should be doing it just like I do it. Let's go. And and they think that's that's coaching. But it, it doesn't always work that easily. You know, it, it, it takes some strategic effort to be a great coach. Great leaders are among other things, great coaches, right? Not all coaches are necessarily leaders, but all great leaders have to have to be a great coach as well. And, and really helping helping people. This is how I define coaching all the time, Paul. I say it's it's identifying, it's helping implement a plan to get someone from to, to close the gap between their current situation and their desired situation. We have to implement a plan to close that gap. That's what a coach does. It's not just, hey, your numbers look terrible. You should go make some more calls. That's not coaching. That's managing the numbers, but it's not really coaching. But let's talk about why these numbers are here. Um, which, which competencies do we need to work on? Which mindsets do we need to work on? How can we, which ratios don't look great that we can focus on? Uh, and just really developing. And then the key is implementing that plan, helping them really implement it. I just think sales managers need that help to think like a coach. And that's going to make a big impact. Well, one thing that I, uh, I hear often in market, and I, I'd like to understand your response, and is, well, shouldn't a salesperson or a sales manager know how to do this themselves? Like that's what we hire them for right exactly. uh, shouldn't 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 they already know how to do this stuff i just all i should really need to do is measure the uh the tangibles the kpis right um so is that a fair statement or an unfair statement uh some i mean obviously some are going to know that but but it's really it's really the it, it's a self-limiting belief for that individual to believe I already know everything I need to be successful, but worse, it's a self-limiting belief for a manager or a coach or sales manager, or sales leader to think his team already knows everything they need. Just because they've won once doesn't mean they're going to win the next client because the next client has a different need and a different decision-making structure and a different process. And, um, you know, th there has to be that ongoing coaching. Uh, look, I, I believe we live in a world that tends towards disorder. So if there's not specific, specific effort to, to grow, you're going to regress. So we find the same thing. If, if your sales teams, if, if they're not specifically being coached to grow, that they're, they're going to get worse. They're not going to get, they're not going to stay the same and they're not going to get better on their own. A, a thing, anything left to its own is going to tend to disorder. And, and so we've got to come in and provide that order and structure because that's true. It's very easy to, to mess up a sales team, but it's super hard to fix a sales team. It takes significant effort because you're fighting against nature. Yeah, no. And, and I tend to, like, I hear that in market. Uh, like I said, I do hear that in market. And I heard it at, Especially in when I was uh, a sales coach and sales consultant, is that you know, well, that's why I hire the sales team. I think, but I think it is so important. I'm in complete agreement that it's so important to have uh, a coach, whether inside or outside the organization, that can see yeah. the blind spots and help us to work through those. And even with just the goal of questioning, questioning, and then turning those questions into pathways to find answers. Yeah. Um, and I do see that. Uh, what is what do you see when we talk about that that movement from manager to coach? What are some of the critical aspects that somebody really needs to to have and take in uh, to become, you know, salesperson, sales manager, sales sales coach? What what are some of the critical aspects they need to learn? Yeah, and I don't. I, I think 
perhaps I, I overstate a little bit. And I don't think a sales manager is necessarily a bad thing, right? There's much management that needs to happen when you're in that role. But additionally, we need to be coaching. And the two are not diametrically opposed. They're just two different hats that we wear. So when, when I'm managing numbers and I'm managing pipelines and, 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 and I'm spreadsheets and reports, I got to report up the chain. I have to do all of that to be successful. But my passion is really help those people that, that can do that already. How do you also then put on your coach's hat? So yes, you have to be able to manage. Manage is, is often task oriented, right? Basic, we've heard all this before, managers, task oriented, coaches are people oriented. But but it's it's true. Think about that for a minute. Coaches are focused on the individual they're coaching and the team as a whole. But obviously, as the individual gets better, the whole team's going to get better. So as the individual gets better, I'm helping that person recognize, here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. What's the path to get from here to there? What are the steps I need to take? And then you help them implement that. So we have to know there's times when I'm doing my one-on-ones which is another subject, right? Most folks aren't doing one-on-ones, but when I do my one-on-ones, am I going to put on the management hat because we got to dig into some numbers and we got to look at this, this, this opportunity that's coming up or am I putting on the coaching hat where this person really needs to put together a plan? Coaches don't tell coaches help people develop a plan. Um, I think that's, that's really important. That answer your question. I think I did Paul. Yeah, I think I think you nailed it. Uh, I mean, it's it's really. What have you seen in market? I, well, it's really the the both and right. And I sometimes it needs to be both and in terms of different people. I mean, sometimes a, a great manager is not a great sales coach because they have different different elements yeah. uh, and different skills and abilities uh, that they bring to the table. Mm-hmm. But you know, I've always seen coaching is if I'm if I'm out there by myself. And I'm trying to get something done, right? I have, I'm trying to make a sale. I'm trying to close a big deal. Um, and I'm a really capable salesperson, right? The first person I'm going to rely on that is me. Re- rely on for that is me. And you find that a lot in in sales where you they're saying, well, you know, I've been hired. I'm going to rely on me. This is my job. I'm a type A personality. I'm going to go out and get it. But again, that limits the view of what I have to the, you know, the eyes and ears that I contain in my my brain. And I always find that that coach that can help me get unstuck, I, I never really became, you know, a, I would say a, even a good salesperson until I started relying on that, that uh, input of others to test my, it didn't mean I need to move off, move off my own beliefs. But relying on the input of others to to add to them and help me see the blind spots, because uh, yeah. exactly what you were saying is like, I can go out and hit a number. I can make the hundred calls. I can find the four opportunities. You know, I could have the the seventeen meetings. But if I'm doing all that stuff and nailing it and doing it really well, my results don't show it on the the far end. I need that. I have to have that person that trust that I trust that helps me understand what am I not seeing? Yeah. Are you, are you familiar with the Johari window uh, in terms of self-awareness? I it's, am. It's a really, it? Yeah. It's yeah. really interesting. No, I just, when you use the word blind spot, it made me think of that. It's, it's really interesting because, you know, self-awareness is so so important in every area of life, like for my per- interpersonal relationships and what what am I projecting to others? I think I know, but do I really know until I ask others who are, are looking in uh, the the idea of the, the Johari window, of course, it's the four quadrants. There's those things in my life that I see and everybody else sees. And then there's those things that only I see, but I hide from other people. There's those things I don't see, but other people do. And then there's that box that there's just things inside of me that we don't even, I don't know, nobody knows until a set of circumstances causes it to come out. We just don't know. What what that window down on there, that the I guess the way I did it, the bottom left, but the, the window that says things you know about me, but I don't know about myself yet. 
when we can focus on those areas in life, we're willing to allow others to speak into our life and say, hey, here's something you might not be noticing that I've observed. What do you think we can do to bridge that gap? Right. It being allowing other people to speak in, whether that's personal, professional, you know, in all of our areas of life that we're allowing others to speak into us because there's just always going to be those things that we don't see. So I use the illustration all the time of, you know, let, let's back and I'm dating myself a little bit. There's probably some more recent examples. But when when Tiger Woods was on the top of the world, he was the best of the best. How many coaches did he have at that time? Right. He didn't say to himself, I've got this figured out. But even when he was already the best of the best, he had a strength coach, he had a swing coach, he had a putting coach, he had a nutrition coach, he had a mindset coach. He had all of these people speaking into him so that he could keep getting better. Um, that's why I think having that external view, whether it's, you know, again, like you said, internal, someone in your company that's speaking into you, observing things and helping you build a plan, or, or you get an external resource, someone who is is there to see the things you're missing and help you take the next steps. Really important and powerful and fun. Yeah. And how, how often do you run into situations where the people that you're working with just aren't coachable? Hmm. Because, because doesn't that... It takes a level of trust that I have uh, to allow you to speak into my life. Um, I mean, where where do you ever run up against that obstacle where somebody won't won't give you that level of trust, or you can't or you can't create it, or they're just frankly not coachable? Yeah, absolutely. We see that. And again, you mentioned earlier on that, that we we both are practitioners with the Objective Management Group, and so we rely heavily on that data. We believe in the science. Um, that is there. And so, you know, that, that's definitely one of the things we're, we're looking for um, when we initiate, when we first engage with a new client uh, at a company level, we, we look at the coachability of their team. And that's going to determine how, how much we believe we can move the needle um, if their team's not coachable. It doesn't matter how great or poor they currently are. If they're not coachable, we're going to have a hard time moving the needle. And so what do we do in those situations, right? I think we have to begin to address the self-limiting beliefs. You know, we have to look at the mindset because most often people that, that don't want to be coached by others, yeah, they, they, they just don't, they don't see what could be. And so when we start casting that vision of, of, of what kind of a sales rep they could become, uh, what their future might look like. And of course, that means we got to find out what motivates them. Is it intrinsic or extrinsic or altruistic? You know, what is it that's motivating people? And then we we show them what it could look like and let us help you get there. See, coaches that are doing something for their own reasons, you know, they're not going to win, but but find they're not going to make they're not going to make a big difference. But but a coach that really is focused on that sales rep, what is driving this rep to be successful? What are, what are their needs? You know, is it to, to go buy that, that new Land Rover uh, or is it to be the one who wins the contest and always has their name on the top of the list? Or is it, I just want to help people and make people feel good. You know, what is it that's motivating that person? And then suddenly they become more coachable, right? Because they see what could be and they recognize you want to help them get there. So there's a, there's an element of what I call wayfinding in this, which is really mm. being able to, to envision a path together um, yeah. and, mm. and finding our way. What, one of the things I'd like to, I'd like to uh, end our discussion on, which is you, you mentioned mindset. Yeah. Um, and that, that shift in mindset or changing mindset and even the ability to control mindset I found is one of the, um, the defining characteristics of a really good salesperson. And, uh, so how do you coach people and how, how do you help people better control their own individual mindset? Like I, I'm giving you a big, broad question. Mm -hmm. I know you can yeah. go a million ways in that, yeah. but 
but how, how is that something that a that a coach can walk alongside somebody and really make an impact in? That that, that is a broad question, but it's really important one to understand um, theoretically, and then you can apply it in all sorts of different areas. But but I, I think. You know, my, my first thought when you say that is back to what we spoke about a minute ago, self-awareness. If we can help individuals recognize maybe where they lack commitment or they lack desire or they have a high need of approval um, and, and we can help folks begin to see that, then you can really begin to move the needle. But that mindset, it becomes... It's so fundamental, right? Um, I tell I, when we're doing recruiting, I, I do a lot of recruiting for, for my clients as well. When we when we recruit, I'll often say, and you, you know, this isn't certainly earth shattering or unique to me, but hire for the mindset. We can always train the skill set. I can coach almost anyone to be a successful sales rep if their mindset's in the right place. But it doesn't matter how off the charts good they show up with skill set. If their mindset isn't in the right place, they're they, they're going to hit a ceiling. They they might become divisive on the team. They could become cancerous. I mean, it's there's so much that revolves around that mindset. But if I've already got it, that that's hiring. So I'm not going to hire that person. But what if they're already in my organization? I don't I don't want to just let them go. We want to focus on self awareness. A quick example. I know we're pushing time here, but I was recently coaching uh, one of our clients, and and his ass- uh, he hired a new guy. We we did the assessment through OMG that we had mentioned, and and his score came back really low on commitment. And so we're looking at his assessment together, and he's like, I don't, I don't understand. That. Like I feel like I I I do the job, I'm, and and his responsibility was low too. He's like I I I do the job. I, I get things done, and like yeah, your numbers have shown that you know you're 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 hitting some good numbers, and that that's good. And so just ask him what happens. What what would a sales rep who who is low in responsibility? What would that look like? I know it's not you, but what would that look like? And as he began to describe, well, they would probably make excuses about this. They they wouldn't put their numbers in their CRM. And you could literally watch his face as he goes through this. He looks up and says, all right, I got it. You're, I'm describing myself here. I get it. And so <laughs> he, he, he got it when he started working his way through. And he said, all right, these are things I can. Why, why is that important? How, I'm obviously hitting my numbers. Like, yeah, you're hitting these numbers, but what could you be if we could address just a few things? And not only are you hitting your numbers, but how much happier and satisfied and content would you be if we tweaked just a few of these things about the way you're viewing your role in sales? And uh, it was super powerful. So here you've got a guy who scored low in mindset areas, but became self-aware and was ready to tackle it and get better. Well, and I think uh, to me, that sums up, right? The need for a a great coach is is that person that can help us uncover exactly where we are and take us to that next, help us take, I mean, you can't force anybody to get to that next step, but uh, same thing was, you know, a strength coach. If you, if you're looking to, you know, your, your current squat is 225 and you're looking to squat 350, then you could keep doing the exact same thing that you're doing, or you can look at somebody and help them. Uh, they can help you become self-aware and change your form or train more effectively or anything like that. And we ignore it all the time. And I mean, well, as, as an industry, we ignore coaching, I think, too much in sales. I think we focus a ton on management. Uh, a ton on management by numbers and KPIs, and not enough on on that uh, mindset coaching and helping. Because sometimes, frankly, people are afraid to do it. They don't know how to have all the. They don't know how to have the answers. Like you don't know. You're not going to know how to close every deal as a coach. Um, and quite frankly, you shouldn't. Yeah, it's probably but true. You Paul. should know. You should know how to ask questions that help help that rep further uncover, you know, tactics they can use and things they could do and that type of stuff. So I think, 
I don't know. I, I love the work you're doing, man. I, I I so respect it, and I think it's it's needed across across the board. So I really appreciate you you coming on here and talking it through with us. Yeah, hey, it's been great. You know, I it, and I appreciate what what y'all are doing at Membrane. We've been talking about how coaching plays such a role, and and your systems are allowing us to do that with our clients and with my with our internal coaches and teams. So yeah, it, it's really super important. And when we can have good technology, good resources and tools to help us do it even better. That's why we appreciate your 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 guy, the way you guys see life and see sales at Membrane. So it's a great partnership. Yeah, when you can get this baseline of facts, like I love, I, whether it be like the assessments you use or the the data that yep. we collect in Membrane or the process, how work <clears throat> work through the process. When you get that that assessment of facts and not just make, I mean, management right is is like it, management based on only the numbers becomes. Okay, you make 50 calls, you now need to make 100 calls and go do that, right? That could be one one way to look at management by numbers. You mm-hmm. can use KPIs, we'll just get more effective. But then to be able to use that to truly impact a person like to help them get better and create that plan, that's great work, man. Absolutely great work. So yeah. um, anything that you would like to to leave the audience with as we're, we're wrapping up, any... Uh, any final thoughts? You know, it just, because you just said something, I am going to add one one thought. It just popped in my head. We talked about managing the numbers and KPIs and making more calls, right? So as we manage and we look at KPIs, um, we can we can add we can we can really increase sales by simply looking at at, at doing more and managing the numbers. But we can really not just add sales, we can multiply sales when we layer on top of that mindset coaching as well, right? So you got the skill set that's definitely going to make people get better, but you layer on mindset and now you're not just getting better by addition, you're getting better exponentially when you can correct them, work on mindset development as well. So yeah, there's your math lesson for the day. Not just adding, let's multiply. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, how do people get in touch with you, Dave? Yeah, great. Um, LinkedIn, of course, is, a, is an easy way. Uh, you can look up Salesstar there. You can look up David Mullins there. Um, I think I'm uh, David Mullins Jr., if that'll help find it. But uh, you can also just email me, david.mullins at salesstar.com. Be happy to uh, kick some more things around with more of you. Fantastic. All right. Well, take David up on the take Dave up on the invitation. Reach out, get in touch. Uh, thank you so much for being on today. And with that, we're going to end the show. Thank you so much. And sh- keep shining bright. Thanks, Paul. It's been an honor. We'll see you. Thank you so much for listening to the art and science of complex sales. This podcast is sponsored by Membrane and our partners from around the globe. Here at Membrane, we believe that B2B sales is at a crossroads. Due to decades of quantity-based prospecting, information overload, and really a shift towards efficiency over service and pitching over leadership in sales, customers are saying enough is enough. They're tuning out average performers and choosing to take most of the buying journey on their own. This results in up and down sales results, forecasts that are all over the place, and salespeople that are half committed due to the fact that they're having poor results and they have an inability to truly connect with customers. We believe the road successful companies are taking to combat this is threefold. Number one, training to create leaders and executives across all areas of the team with strong habits and sales methodologies that bring value. Number two, technology. Technology that focuses and helps a salesperson succeed and reinforces great habits rather than wasting their time on filling out fields for reporting or wasting their time on spamming customers that have no interest in ever buying. Third, talent. And I'm talking about talent that's empowered and emboldened to make a difference for their customers and their companies. So where are you on that journey? Membrane and our network of partners across the globe are here to help and to elevate the sales profession. We streamline critical technology by combining CRM, training and enablement, and more into one seamless platform. We drive best-in-class methodologies through our partners. They provide the top thought leadership methodologies and resources from across the globe. And our collective efforts are dedicated to recruiting, training, coaching, and empowering, and measuring the habits of the top teams in the world to ensure success. Join us at Membrane.com to learn more. And thank you so much for listening.